the Helmholtz theorem is has a rather involved proof. Um, the the question of the Helmholtz theorem starts with uh, if you have some vector field um, given by f, right? And you're given you're not given the vector field itself, but you're given the divergence of the vector field, which is d, and you're given the curl of the vector field, which is c. That's also a vector field. Divergence is a scalar field. Um, then the question is, what form does f take? Well, the theorem states, um, if you work through the example on the page, you'll kind of see how the parts fit together. It's not and terribly intuitive. Um, we're going to cover it later with actual fields, so you'll you'll get a, a, a feel for it. But um, the theorem states that f, as long as this tends to zero, faster than one over r squared, right? And the same goes for this. As long as these tend towards zero faster than one over r squared, then um, and as long as the field itself can be assumed to tend towards zero then the field is given by this formula. Um, where u is 1 over 4 pi integral over all space of the divergence that we just given, right? r prime vector all over r d tau prime. And w vector is given by 1 over 4 pi integral over all space of the curl you were given, where r dot prime, where that curly r on the bottom is just equal to um, r vector minus r vector prime. And the, the prime vectors are used inside the, 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 the integral, they're not. That's why we need to use them so we don't confuse that with the r's outside of there. So that's basically the Helmholtz theorem. Um, the interesting corollary is that if you have a differentiable function f of r, um, which goes to zero faster than one over r as r approaches infinity, so if it goes to zero faster than one over r, then you can always express it um, as the gradient of a scalar and the curl of a vector. So it's always something like this. So that's, that's a pretty powerful theorem. It, it gives us... Um, some hints when we're talking about vector fields, we, we should think about what the potential is, what the um, underlying curl field is, and we can put things together. Uh, again, if you want to follow the proof, it's in the book. Um, it's not a trivial thing to follow, and we're going we're gonna to take it apart later on in this course anyway. So have fun with that.